Hey guys, I just want to preface it this video with a little monologue. Uh, I, I would put it at the end, but I see the analytics. I know not all you guys watch it to the end. So I'm going to put this up front because I kind of feel like it's important. I have been beyond frustrated with this build lately. Um, matter of fact, I got to the point where I thought that I was just going to sell the whole lot. I told my daughter I was going to sell it for 80 bucks. Where I got 80 bucks is anybody's guess. I don't know. I was just that frustrated. The frustration stemmed from not being able to figure something out. And that something was I had no throttle response uh, when I pushed the gas pedal. It's a drive-by wire system, and it had intermittent, sometimes it would have intermittent response. Most of the time, it had no response at all. So I unloaded the parts cannon on this thing. I bought a new throttle position sensor. You'll see that's the end clip, basically, where I replaced the throttle position sensor. I replaced two TAC modules, um, ordered a new gas pedal with the new uh, accelerator position switch in it, checked all my wiring, Googled and Googled and Googled wiring diagrams, schematics, tried all kinds of different configurations nothing would work this thing would absolutely have no throttle response at all and i reached out to some other youtubers for help that you know have had similar builds or that do ls swaps and one of the guys super cool guy tried to help me out but i think in the end he started to uh kind of ignore me too i think he came to a point where Hey man, you know, I tried everything. I mean, I, I I tried everything. Parts and different tunes and bin files and XDFs and I mean, you name it, I tried it. Uh, so finally, after I ordered the new throttle pedal and that didn't work, I had my son-in-law who used to work for a, a distribution center. He recently started at Becker Buick here in town uh, and he has access to all of the, you know, wiring schematics and stuff. And I had him pull a wiring schematic so I could double check my wiring. I couldn't find an actual, like, throttle pedal to tack module, tack module to throttle body uh, wiring schematic for my particular engine, which was the LM4 out of an 04 Trailblazer Envoy, whatever. He pulled the schematic, gave it to me. I double checked all the wiring, pin for pin. Everything seemed to be in order. I mean, I put a meter on every wire. Everything seemed to be doing what it should have been doing. So after I ordered the throttle pedal and that didn't work either, I tore back into the rat's nest wiring that I have and regrounded everything and now I have throttle response. So I, I guess the, the main frustration, and, and I know I'm rambling here, but it, you know, it, it's really frustrating when you watch a YouTube channel and of course it's TV, everything can be edited, everything can make, you know, you can make it look super easy and that you don't have any issues at all ever and everything's great and lovely and the world's full of rainbows and everything but there's some youtubers out there that i watch on a pretty consistent basis and i've reached out to several of them and have either been ignored or told hey, there's only one way to do this, and if you don't do it the way that I say to do it, then you're stupid, and don't argue with me, and good luck, leave me alone, F off, basically. 
This one YouTuber in general that I'm speaking of seemed like a super cool guy, knew what he was talking about. I reached out to him. In his defense, he did try to help me, but he wanted me to do it his way, which was basically change the PCM, change the wiring harness, change to a drive-by cable, basically change everything that I've already done. And I know that the throttle body used to respond to the gas pedal input when it was in the trailblazer. There's no way or no reason that it shouldn't respond when it's in the Firebird. I don't think, and now I know for sure, that I don't have to put in a 411 PCM, change out the throttle body, to a, a drive-by cable, change out the throttle pedal to a drive-by cable, change out all the fuel injectors, you know, basically redo everything that I've already done because, in my opinion, that's the only way this guy knows how to do it. So him and I got into a little tissy over messenger, and I told him, hey, as soon as I get it figured out, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And as soon as I get it figured out, I'll send you a video of it working. He told me not to bother and to go argue with somebody else. Me being me, I might have trolled him a little bit. So I got it working and I sent him a video and I said, I told you there's one, more than one way to skin a cat. And I didn't make it like your 2002 Z28 either. Vroom, vroom, vroom. And basically, I was met with a leave me the F alone. So, here's the deal, guys. If you're going to be a YouTuber and you're going to put your stuff out there on the internet for everybody to watch or whoever wants to watch it can watch it and somebody reaches out to you for help, Try and help them out. Don't argue with them. Don't whatever. Just try and help them out. Don't be a dick. Right? I, for one, look, I'm no professional at this. I'm not a professional at all. I'm learning a ton. And I'm learning a ton by watching these YouTubers. And then I'm a kind of guy that wants to put what I've learned into action. And I've come this far. It has everything been perfect and rainbows? No. Have I had my issues? You bet that I have. I've come this far. I've built my first engine. I'm 51 years old and I've built my first engine. I didn't used to, you know, live a life of cars and love cars. After I had kids and my Kids grew up and they started getting into cars and I and I was helping them out with what I knew I could do. I decided that I wanted to build a car. So I'm building a car and I may need some help along the way. Just help a guy out. If any of you, any of you, even though I'm not a professional and I'm just flying by the seat of my pants and I have issues and I have struggles and I'm overcoming them, I'm adapting, I'm overcoming, I'm learning, I'm trial and error. But if any of you guys out there have any questions for me at all, or any tips, pointers, whatever, I will be more than happy to help you out as far as I can. And I promise I won't be a dick. So to that end, I'm sure I still have some issues on this. And I sure, I'm sure that I'm still going to have to tweak some stuff and fix some stuff and I'm going to screw up and I'm going to have to fix it. To that end, here's a video of some other stuff that I think I screwed up on that I'm trying to adapt and overcome on. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to try to do more uploading in the new year. This is New Year's Eve when I'm doing this bit of it. It's been a couple months, if not longer, since I uploaded my last video. Stick in there, guys. We've got some new subscribers. I super appreciate all of you guys. If you comment, I will do my best to respond. 
I don't check YouTube all the time, but I recently turned my notifications on on my phone, so I will get them, and I will respond if you have anything to say, good, bad, indifferent, whatever. Here's a video of me overcoming some issues. I hope you enjoy. Until next time, peace, and I'm out. What's up guys, welcome back. So I have my power steering pump put on the engine over there and I ran into a problem and I wanna point this out to you guys because it might be something that you guys run into with your swap. That issue is keeping with the right accessory package. Let me bring you over here and show you what I mean. Okay. Now that I've got the power steering pump on and the alternator, I pulled off the water pump because originally I didn't think that the crank pulley was back far enough. Um, I really put the beans to that thing and matter of fact so hard that I broke the power steering pump brackets. right off the power steering pump. So I had, I had this pry bar wedged in through the pulley and underneath that power steering bracket, wedged in through the pulley and underneath the power steering bracket. And I gave it the beans with my socket wrench and a breaker bar and it just snapped these, these brackets right off of it and the thing hit the floor. So I don't think that thing's going back any further. I think that's where it needs to be. It's where home is. So the issue that I ran into is obviously this is the truck crank pulley. Now I bought the water pump for an LS1 and the spacer brackets to go with that to keep the truck spacing. I also bought a lower alternator mount bracket off eBay. It's not the LSX Innovations or ICT billet one. And the issue that I'm having is they don't line up. Uh, let's see if I can. So, right there, it's lined up, but keep in mind that this bracket is loose and I pulled it out forward to line it up. So, I took a measurement of what that gap is, and it's like an inch and seven sixteenths. So, so now I'm going to cut some spacers an inch and seven sixteenths and see if when I bolt it up, uh, if at least the crank pulley and the alternator line up, and then we'll work with the power steering pump. So here we go. Okay, that's three. One, two, three. Now, I made them a little long because I think what I want to do is grind them because that sawzall is not going to cut them super smooth and great. So we'll grind these down and make them perfect. <laughs>
Okay, let's see if I'm on point with this. I'll try and do this and keep my mitts out of your way, but I think there's going to be some points in this where I'm going to be in the way and you're not going to be able to see. And I apologize for that. All right, there's number one. <clears throat> I uh, kept the bolts in here just so I didn't have to pull the whole alternator. So we're going to do these kind of one at a time here. Bear with me, don't click away. We're gonna get to the meat and potatoes of this in a second. That's tight quarters. Ooh. What does Rain Man Ray say? Close quarters combat. Yes, it is. That's number two, and then number three is way down here in the nether regions. You guys probably won't be able to see that. The crank pulley's in the way. <clears throat> Pull the bolt back. Reach down and under. Slide in our little spacer. And get it all happily lined up. All right. You can apply some torque. Then I'll take the level and put it across here and we'll see how good we did or if we need to make some adjustments. Oh, torquey torque. Yeah. All right. I got one bolt that seems to be, well not seems to be, is totally a different size on the head. And I think I had to buy that one from a hardware store. But no matter. All right. Double check the first two we did. Gonna be a little harder now because I dropped my extension, but we'll make it work. All right, let me grab my level and I'll show you. For the moment of truth. Oh my, my GoPro mounts in the way. Let's slide you over. Perfect. Let me grab you. It looks good to me. So now we can work on doing the power steering pump because that one, here, let me show you. Power steering pump. So it's up against the crank pulley. Big old gap. So let's work on that one next.
Well guys, it's the next week. I actually had to wait. I had to order some longer bolts for the power steering pump. It comes with these looking bolts right here, but, but they're super short. And since I had to space mine out, I ordered some, they were M10 by 1.5 and I ordered them 80 millimeters long. Uh, and then once I knew my spacing, then I cut those 80 millimeter bolts down because they were actually bottoming out on the back of the head. Uh, but it's all in, everything lines up. Let me uh, walk you over here to my trusty level. It was, it was kind of a pain in the butt, so I didn't film it all, but uh, as you can see here with my level, everything lines up and then with this this is the truck tensioner and i modified the crap out of that thing but it's all flat and i don't know if you're going to be able to see but it's flat down there against the crank pulley um the hardest part was the power steering pump hands down and this tensioner the truck tensioner took a while and what I did there is I just ground it down ground grind grind I had to grind off the bottom right there because it there's a thing that comes down here and rests on this where's my hand there's a thing that comes it's like this is all one piece and it comes down and it wraps around there you know, like it rests on there and then it comes back up and I just cut that off ground it these deals right these deals right here were long for the truck spacing and I ground them down to dang near nothing but it's all lined up uh, your results may vary that's my infomercial results may vary uh but it's starting to look you know complete so what i'm gonna do is measure for my belt and my soon-to-be son-in-law works for a distribution company and he can get me a gates belt um so we'll put a gates belt on this i still need to order the radiator and the hoses and then one thing that I did get, if I can find it in my mess over here, is oil pressure sensor. Now this is a one terminal oil pressure sensor. So I'm hoping that I can take, because I'm right now I've got the truck oil pressure sensor in there. But my gauge doesn't work. It just pegs it out to 100. So I'm hoping that with this one, I can put it right to the gauge and have it work. But that remains to be seen. Um, I'm going to quit for the night. It'll be instantaneous for you guys. But next time I come back out here, we'll measure for the belt. So what I did to measure my belt is I had my handy dandy socket wrench and I loosened up the tensioner all the way and I took the original belt and I just wrapped it probably not gonna do this fully but <clears throat> I wrapped it in the order that it went just something like this and then uh and then the other end came around to here i'm not gonna fully do it but you get the idea and then i pinched it 
I've pinched it like this. Pinched it like this, where the two ends meet. I cut it, and then I measured it. And this belt measured 79 inches with the tensioner all the way up here. So, I got, I got a Gates Micro V part number K060798. It's a six rib and it's three sixteenths wide, or I'm sorry, 13 sixteenths wide by 80 and three eighths. So, let's see if I'm a complete bumbling idiot or if this will work. <laughs> it's cold out here and this thing is not super straight but we're gonna work with it I think that goes up like that down and around like so like so so and like so on that smooth face pulley like so Get my wrench here hold this in when it's on and it's on and it's let me show you it's lining up this is what i've learned this deal right here is lining up with this first notch there's a second notch to go so when you get shrinkage or whatever Oh, hey, shrinkage. Well, let's just edit that. I don't know. Looks cool. Got a belt on at least. I think I don't like... I think I like that being like that better. I guess she's on there. We'll just have to, oh, you know what? It's not on there. It's not on there right. I'm off some ribs there. All right, now she's on there. She might be a little, she might be a little loose. Well, there's a third son of a bitch. We're going to try it. We're going to see if we throw belts. If we do, I'll take this one back. And I get me another one. Because it seems a little... Seems a little loose, but... <clears throat> Remember, I'm new at this. <laughs> 